Hmm. Seemed a little troubling. And then later on, um, back in, um, I believe, 96, um, the... One of Kristen's bloody earrings was found by a tenant at the former residence of Paul Flores's mother. So, I mean, okay, so here's where I, I think I get frustrated because what, I, what I've read here is from the research, apparently this earring has since mysteriously disappeared from police custody. And I don't, I, I'm trying to... Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to the Solvable Mysteries podcast, episode number 27. Just as promised, we are doing a second episode this week, so a little bit uh, a, a difference in our usual scheduling. And this, uh, just like episode 26, where we uh, covered the, uh, pretty much the latest news on the uh, coronavirus outbreak, uh, today we are also doing a, an update on a very interesting uh uh, I guess disappearance case uh, of Kristen S- Smart. Uh, you are seeing her image right now on, uh, you know, pretty much if you're watching this on YouTube. So um, yeah. Uh, also, I'm joined by my co-host Glenn Heikob, who is right uh, up to date with this case and 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 is going to give us the recent, I guess, the most recent uh, information regarding what's what's going on. So how are you doing, man? And yeah. Uh, it was the breakdown. Doing okay. I'm, always, I'm wondering why it is so many of these things are out of California. I feel like uh, one episode out of three with these weird, mysterious disappearances, like it's always California. And it's not, it's mm-hmm. not just because I'm living here. It feels like it really is a lot of weird stuff like that happening maybe it's just because we have such a big population exactly. here but yeah I've, yeah I've noticed that as well uh, that you know most of what the disappearances that we cover are uh, you know from like um the, the west coast definitely yeah it's real strange so yeah this is one interestingly that i think was happening around the time that i was in college as well so uh Kristen denise smart was born on February 20th, 1977. So she's, gosh, not even a year younger than me. Uh, she was born in Osberg, Germany. Yeah. Uh, to Stan and Denise Smart, who were both teachers. Um, she also had a brother and a sister. They relocated uh, to the U.S. during her childhood. And she was raised in Stockton, California, which is basically a Northern California city. It's sort of not... A super nice northern california city yeah but, uh, just, yeah, just a, a quick little... note from like what i've heard like i've heard that yeah. stockton is uh, i'm not sure how like is it widely known in the united states that stockton is a, a bit of a rough uh, spot yeah but, 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 yeah there's i think yeah. <laughs> there's I think uh, I think the the Diaz brothers who are the yeah, MMA that's, fighters. That's that's yeah. the only <laughs> the only information I have on Stockton is that uh, Nate and Nick Diaz from 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 UFC. You know that these guys are from Stockton and they're always you know representing Stockton. Uh, yeah, so that that's how I know yeah, yeah. about about that city. So um, if if those yeah. two guys are like the you know the the promo for your city, <laughs> the yeah. ambassadors, for yeah, the ambassadors city. Yeah, for yeah. your city, then <laughs> it's it's you know it's 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 a fairly well, rough city. I feel like I, the only time I I can remember being there, I think I was about thirteen, and I went to a water park there and like an overnight camp. But like even that, yeah, it was like a little bit. Yeah. rough and tumble so yeah yeah it's, it's not like a big de- vacation resort that's for sure so um she uh smart was was enrolled at uh cal poly san luis obispo um san luis obispo in contrast to stockton is a nice little coastal town it's uh further south it's closer to me um it's sort of just just a bit up the coast um so not quite bay area it, um it's really nice up there uh i recommend visiting it have you been there and uh uh not lately i probably haven't been through there in probably past maybe 10 11 years it looks really um, really nice and, and cozy yeah you know what i would recommend anybody that's ever 
visits California. If you drive up uh, the one freeway past all these these towns on the coast, it's just beautiful. It's, it's one of the, the nicest parts of the United States to go drive through. So, yeah, I definitely recommend that whole coastal community there. And it's and it's all priced, you know, like it's really nice too. So we're talking million dollar houses um, oh, yeah, all up course. and down the coast there. Yeah, on the on the, the coast. So, um, you know, she's a student there and uh, the night that she disappeared uh, Kristen attended a birthday party for a fellow student uh, and this was right before the Memorial Day weekend which I think Mm -hmm. it sounds like was was part of the the confusion so at 2 in the morning um, May 25th 1996 she's found passed out on a neighbor's lawn by two fellow students their names are Cheryl Anderson and Tim Davis who had just both left the party Mm -hmm. Uh, they help her to her feet and they start to walk her back to the nearby dorm and another student from the party, uh, Paul Flores, whose name we are going to repeat several more times during this conversation, joined their group and offered to help the two return smart to her dorm room safely. Um, and it says here, Davis parted the group first since he lived off campus mm-hmm. and driven to the uh, Anderson uh, Cheryl so she's the second person that leaves the group and now it's just Flores and Kristen walking back to her dorm and he says Flores says that he, he, he told police that he walked her back to her as far as his dormitory Santa Lucia Hall and then allowed her the same person that was passed out drunk Allowed her to walk back to her hall, which is Muir, Muir Hall dorm, all by herself. And this supposedly is the last time anyone ever saw mm-hmm. Kristen. So right. Um, so um, this immediately, you know, brings back uh, like uh, episodes for me. Like uh, it's sort of similar to the uh wait uh the natalie holloway right natalie holloway uh, as well as yeah. michael negrit uh, because it had the touch of um a disappearance from a you know a a, a college dorm essentially so yeah yeah this, and uh, even yeah, brian exactly. schaefer right because you had oh, somebody yeah, yeah. Was brian schaefer, drunk at the bar yeah. suddenly disappears there's, there's a common factor here i mean yeah i mean I, so the one of the common factors is alcohol mm-hmm. um the other common factor seems to be, well, she was for sure underage um, to be drinking. But once again, it's sort of like, I don't know if this is just something about the 90s, though. Natalie Holloway was in the 2000s. But like once again, like, I don't know, I can't help but express the opinion that, especially on a college campus, but maybe anywhere, um, if someone who maybe can't protect themselves, but, you know, or yeah, exactly. some way exposes, yeah, is drunk, right? Like, don't, don't let them go back alone with anybody. Like, like, and, and don't. I, I mean, you know, once again, don't, don't let. That's a bad don't move. Put some, that, that, that's a yeah, bad move. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that, I feel like people should have some more common sense. That you know, the intoxicated just, uh, young people are prone to dangers. Yeah, and then, and then maybe maybe don't don't trust anybody. So don't trust. Don't don't leave like a like like a drunk young lady with a bunch of young men who she barely knows or you know what I mean it just it just feels like like those kind of like it would have been better if all three of those people had safely walked her back to her dorm exactly. and made sure she made it in right so that I guess that's what I'm trying to say is it doesn't it doesn't seem like they, they really looked out for her they were more interested right. in getting so her. essentially yeah. like the first thing that I'm uh, interested in uh, were like her friends like the two people that were initially uh, you know leading her that found her like passed out were they like also intoxicated a little bit i bet yeah i mean they were all, all three of these people came from the party so i'm mm-hmm. sure they were all yeah all loaded and yeah i mean you know what 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 is disturbing i think to everybody right away is you know after the fact when she goes missing they realize well she didn't have any of her money or credit cards on her when she went missing so i, I guess i'm assuming they found it in her at her room mm-hmm. um Unfortunately, what what happened was because this party was right before the long holiday vacation. Yeah. Um, everybody, it's not like the police department kind of thought that oh, you know, just just like everyone else takes off for the weekend for the vacation, 
that she had just taken off and and no one really was too alarmed that she went missing i guess you know like i guess that makes sense right you know what is before the holiday weekend i mean i i i can tell you my Mm -hmm. probably from like almost the second half of my junior year all through my senior year i used to leave my dorm every thursday afternoon and i wouldn't be back until sunday so i would i would go stay with my parents and you know like like my girlfriend lived near my parents Mm -hmm. so like that only made sense so i was actually not even there for half the week um i just that's the way my classes were so yeah yeah, it makes sense you know that they're like so that's what they thought but um no didn't turn out to be the case that was she was actually missing and i think it, it soon snowballed into like a big missing persons case um and it was interesting because this this started to become kind of a nutty a nutty thing. Like as a, as, as a side note, um, there's another famous case that we haven't really covered yet called the Lacey Pearson murder. Um, and at some I feel point, like I've, I've heard about this case, but um, yeah, 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 there was there was at some point they actually even suspected that um, Scott Peterson, who was the the convicted murderer in that case. Lacey's husband they started to wonder if maybe he had actually done that too because it was relatively close to the same area and, you know oh, just so I guess he's, to, okay so yeah this was this was, he's this, this, was right? this, this man well, on what, the right well, well no I mean it, it kind of falsely implicated he, he he killed his wife but I guess there was there was so much fear around this is like another one of those like red hot California missing persons cases that then turned out into like to be a real murder when they found the body yeah. and like <laughs> This guy, this guy was so untrustworthy that they at one point even thought that maybe he had something to do with this. Just it turned out it was it was a false lead, but mm-hmm. you know it just goes goes to show you, you know California has a lot of this, you know, this <laughs> and, and and it, it just, happens all the time in in, in, yeah. in Cali. Uh, it's scary. So so you just, know this just false, a, yep. a a really quick uh, interruption because an interesting fact about uh, Kristen that I found on her Wikipedia, she was actually six foot one which is like uh one oh, wow yeah so so just you know what this says to me this like gives a different sort of a a a, a background in my head immediately because like if you have a you know a, a female friend who's like you know on the shorter side let's say like five foot two or five five one you know something like that you you sort of like uh would would feel i guess a little bit more protective of of that person than you know your friend who who essentially if she was my friend she would be like two inches taller than me so you know like i would not necessarily feel the same way about having to ensure her safety because you know she was fairly tall right so i mean it's it's a factor i I feel like that that's a factor in the case yeah you know that's a good point i mean think of that and it also come to think of it when you look at some of the physical evidence that they found right away maybe that explains some of what's going on because yeah that you're right that's a really tall person that's she's only an inch shorter than me um so that's somebody with some pretty decent mass and and presumably strength right you have to I you mean, have to have yeah. some level of strength to carry that around um yeah so yeah that's okay that's that's pretty fascinating so so yeah you know right away this paul flores guy starts getting some attention and there's some disturbing signs right away. So apparently, between the um, the I guess the, was the state of the local police and the university police, his story to them about exactly what happened, like the facts don't totally match up. Like he's not giving a consistent story, but unfortunately, mm. this wasn't really really revealed until a bit later. I think this is one of those those things that we're going to kind of look at later about how good the police work was here. It's because it sounded like there were some mistakes made, but. Um, the other thing that was interesting was he has a black eye, and then when you when you said the thing about her height, oh yeah, I can like, I can I can see yeah. a black eye like right now that you mentioned like on his like pictures, on his like, face there, like, like right, he got he, his the... right his right eye has a black, you know, uh, like like a, a mark. Uh, oh yeah, below. yeah, you can, you can yeah, see. right below it. And he gave he gave like a bunch of weird reasons, and then when they asked you know for the black eye, I think some some diverging reasons for that, depending on who they asked. And then when they asked his friend like oh, where'd the black eye come from, they're like oh yeah, it came from like some other thing, like like whatever the reason was. I think he said like he said he got it working on his truck or something, mm. and then his friends were like oh no, he had that like he didn't have that until like that night or something. You know what I mean? It was something where it didn't it didn't match up, and I think that was disturbing. But unfortunately. Um, they couldn't seem to really find much 
about him. And I think this is this is you know where this episode I think is more of an update case because what happened was oh yeah o- over the years. So in '96 and '97, um, there was like a uh, an investigation, and then there was like a grand jury hearing, and he pled the fifth. So by that I mean the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution of the United States says that you cannot be compelled to testify against yourself. So here's an interesting thing. Yeah. You can be you can be forced to testify. They can they can bring you in court and if you're not testifying against yourself, so let's say you, you're us, saw me here in California, you know, you you, you came to visit me and you saw me blow away my neighbor. They could bring you into court and essentially force you under under penalty of um, you know getting prison time until you complied to testify to what you saw so you'd either have to have to tell the truth or mm-hmm. lie but of course you get, if you get caught in a lie you could be punished for that um, but yeah if you had done the murder or if I'd done the murder they can't force me to, to tell them myself, against but, yourself exactly yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, so, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what that probably everybody knows that I guess with all the media going out from the US but yeah so that's what the fifth yeah. amendment is so so he pled the fifth just non-stop he would not cooperate he had nothing to say and you know the police had gone and done some searches of his property and of his relatives' property. And what I'm seeing here is that, um, well, a couple things. One was a cadaver dog at one point hit on, um, and by hit I meant signaled that something smelled weird on one of the corners of his mattress, uh, his dorm mattress. So that hmm. seemed a little troubling. And then later on, um, back in, um, I believe '96. Yeah. Um, the huh, one of Kristen's bloody earrings was found by a tenant at the former residence of Paul Flores's mother. Ooh. So I mean, okay. So here's where I, I think I get frustrated because what I what I've read here is from the research. Apparently, this earring has since mysteriously disappeared. From police custody, and I don't. I, I'm tr- I was trying to find a, a reference for that. So this, be, so, so, um, I, you're. A, I, I know you're. You're much more of a sports guy than I am. Have you ever seen the the ESPN, um, show or segment they do called Come On Man? Uh, you ever seen that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Sure, what you're yeah, talking about. So, uh, yeah, was yeah, it about a little bit? Can you break it down? So to me? yeah, yeah. What it is is like every week, like especially football, especially during football season, but yeah. whatever. Um, you know, there'll be like sports bloopers, right? There'll be like a play mm-hmm. and like, and like the football player, whoever it is, someone just messes up big time. And and it's kind of like, like the, it's kind of a joke. It's like a joke sequence where the guys go, come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the coach oh, yelling at you. Where they like, like fill in, about? fill in, uh, the voices, uh, well, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, kind of, it's kind of like, like, you know, if you were watching like, like a football play and it was like, yeah. or, a, or a baseball player, basketball play. And like, you know, you were supposed to pass it to this guy and then to this guy and then dunk it yeah. or, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where it's like a dumb mistake and it's like, come on, man, like do better. Well, like sometimes when I, you know, like you, you and I, here we are in episode 27, we are like probably close to 50 hours ish and to like the show yeah how many coming of these, up there yeah right we're pretty close how many of these friggin episodes have we had like just kind of like this this like incompetence by police like especially in the, it seems like it seems like a, right? every, every other episode has has a touch of that <laughs> like like what's going on like like how do you lose the piece of, I, I mean i feel like it's always some kind of nonsense like this like this person didn't talk to that person or like someone loses a piece of evidence and it's it kind of gets frustrating. Like I get that cops are busy and they're underfunded and people fight them and, and give them a hard time. But like just something like this. And I also get there's a how, how do you lose that? I mean, maybe it yeah. was because the case has been like what? 23 years old. It was like point. dead for a while. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe they were like, um, I don't know, man, <laughs> a, a lot of, uh, police personal you know changes and maybe people that uh, actually valued the, the, the those evidence from the uh, from the you know uh, from the time when when Kristen disappeared the new guys were like you know we need to make some more room because California crime is crazy like we have like getting like um, you know illegal hand like a hundred illegal handguns every day like we need room so I, yeah, I, I, I could see how how like a a small airing would go missing you know I mean between that and just the cops didn't talk to each other and seemed to have like 
like messed up the investigation a little bit and not taking things seriously. Seems like it happens a lot. I'll even say, remember our, our Golden State Killer episode. Um, mm-hmm. Even in that one, it turns out that like if it wasn't for one detective getting personally involved, who was like basically retired, oh, yeah. about to retire, they, they they burned up. They 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 threw out half the evidence already. Like it was only this one guy that saved Crazy. like the other half of the evidence because yeah, it was just because they thought it was all like a dead case. So anyway, yeah, yeah they had done a bunch of a bunch of uh, searches and stuff. Like for instance, since 2011, the sheriff's office had done 18 search warrants. Um, Conducted physical evidence searches. So, I mean, this is, I guess, testifying to the, to the what they did do. Um, so, served 18 search warrant warrants. Ser- conducted physical evidence searches at nine locations. Submitted 37 evidence items from the early days of the case for modern DNA testing. We covered 140 new items of evidence, and conducted 91 in-person interviews and written 30. 30- 364 supplemental reports, but they lost the friggin' earring. So I guess that's the Come part that on. kills me. Is that the, the one piece of evidence that had her blood on it, and oh my was found god! Like, but th- this is so right? implicating. Like the 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 yeah. the, 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 situ- the situational, I guess. Uh, it's bloody glove, right? Oh my god! It's like the exact. We all know what yeah. we're talking about. So um, yeah, <laughs> man. It's, so yeah. So yeah, I mean, meanwhile, you know, he has always denied. Any other contact? When I was doing research, I found like a quote from his lawyer where he was saying, "Oh, everybody needs to move on." You know, they never found anything, and this guy's living his life. Meanwhile, Paul Flores basically is—I'm just going to say—he's been a little bit of a loser. Like, like he didn't—he didn't—he dropped out of college. He didn't mm. really go on to any bigger. I guess he didn't—he didn't do something that you would expect. When, when someone went into college, he ended up like working at like factories and stuff. Yeah. And, and just, just you know, nothing. I mean, you know, not, not, not that that's bad. Obviously, everyone has got to find their own path in life. But it does seem to me like maybe somebody that maybe was either troubled or was h- hiding or running away from something. Like for some reason, he didn't want to hang around that college. So I think that's, that's, that's my point. Yeah. Like maybe he was, he does. And, and then, and then you notice sometimes when you have people like the Golden State Killer case in point or other people that mm-hmm. we find later have done murders, yeah. well, Sometimes it's like that same antisocial personality also makes it hard for them to like commit to things yeah. or hold jobs or you know like 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 the anti- the Golden State Killer guy couldn't really do his job as a cop very well um, and other things so you know just oh yeah case- the, the Golden State Killer guy he had troubles with like his work like right now just reminiscing of that case yeah. um, that that's a wild case that. Yeah, maybe uh, we will have to like return to it so someday, you know, because when they uh, yeah, convict him, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. When when that happens, so, yeah. so um, you know, I mean, some other things that happened, like 2016, they had like another tip off where they said, oh, maybe, maybe there was there was something, and they mm-hmm. they, they found some bones at an excavation site, and it isn't really, it would never was really clear if it was linked to her. So that was interesting. I feel like. To some degree, they were sitting on evidence and they didn't really move on it. So, mm, yeah. okay, here, so, so there, were, there were two main things, I guess, and this is why we're talking about today and giving a quick update. Um, yeah. So one thing was there was a podcast. Um, it was apparently a podcaster here in California who had done um, basically a multi-part series on the case, and it ended up being very popular. Mm-hmm. And I, I really think that... Um, like it says, says here, his his podcast. The guy's name is uh, Lambert. The podcast. Here we go. Your own backyard. Yeah, I and, just, I've uh, just found it. Yeah, yeah, it seems. The guy's the guy's name is Chris Lambert. He's out of Orcutt. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure where that is. Um, and he did a bunch of bunch of episodes. Were really, really reinvigorated interest in the case. And, um, you know, it says here, like, it was downloaded 2 million times, and that's that's pretty significant. That's a nice amount of podcast volumes. That's, 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 that's oh, big time for sure. Is he, like, an ex... Uh, no, maybe he's not. Uh, no, I'm mistaken. But what it looks like a very, very professional uh, website, and, you know, kudos to this guy. He seems like he's, yeah. uh, uh, he's, he's doing excellent work. Yeah, so he went and he, uh, Chris he got everybody interested, and um, I bet you... That people started putting pressure. It probably was one of those things that started to be embarrassing for the local cops, and they said, "You know what? You're right. This thing, this thing is kind of ridiculous. Like we all know who we think did it. Like why are we? Why are we? Why is it so hard to to put a put a, a, a 
a, a pin in. And, and, you know, it's even like, you know, here's one interesting thing is, um, before I get to kind of the final development, um, it was even embarrassing that like the college actually had her failing her classes because she didn't show up for her classes. Right. So they're like, Hey, you know, we don't know what happened to her. She just, she stopped going to class. So we gave her an F <laughs> we're like, and, and people yeah, are like, that's, well, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's definitely bad, uh, bad web yeah. for the college i mean i, I would yeah. assume you would call and find out what happens to the person instead of just giving them f uh, yeah so they, 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 they actually gave her they gave her they gave her w's to say she withdrew um which like you yeah. know maybe it's also a fib but like yeah it's probably a little nicer than having her f so what suddenly happened was um yeah on in uh, just this year and this is where um, you know you're us, you, you and I start getting it on our radar again because it yeah. popped up. Um, somebody contacted the family. At first, they said that the FBI contacted the family, but it turned out, oh no, it wasn't really the FBI. It was like um, it was a retired FBI agent who knew the family, and they're like, and, he, and they gave him a little tip. He's like, look, there's about to be something that's going to happen with this case, and it's going to be pretty soon, like within the next month. So, you know, just get ready to kind of deal with press again. You know, to have this, you know, obviously, like, it's not like they ever put this to rest, but, you know, just like any kind of disturbing thing that happens in your life, um, you know, it's the kind of thing you can lose sleep over. It can really disrupt your life. You're going to have reporters outside your house again. Yeah. So, like, like, hey, maybe you ought to just take a little vacation for a while while these other things happen. Mm -hmm. So, we have, we um, have, we have Paul Flores in, in Walmart. <laughs> buying, yeah. buying, buying bleach and gloves. I bet. Just oh, kidding. Um, <laughs> <still kid. laughs> yeah. no, um, yeah, so, you're, so, you're walking uh, a fine line. Yeah, walking a fine. Allegedly, uh, yeah. No, but uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, the San Luis Obispo Police Department. Yeah, they confirmed uh, they had seized a couple trucks of his for evidence, and then wow, even as you and I literally in between when you and I said we might want to cover this. And now, on February 5th, so this week, right. search warrants were served for specific items of evidence at four different locations in San Luis Obispo, Washington State, and a home here in my county, Los Angeles County. Um, and uh, there, it says here, for higher, higher level of details, it says two at the Arroyo Grande homes of Paul's parents, Susan and Ruben, and one each at Paul's home in San Pedro. So I assume they mean San Pedro um, down by the, the port of Los Angeles mm -hmm. um, and Kenmore, Washington, where it's believed his sister lives. So it's, it's kind of strange. like, wow, like what all could be in all those places? I wonder if they're seizing computers. Cause I know one of the pictures we have has them carrying out like a, like a desktop, it even looks like an old desktop. So it makes you wonder how much kind of a secret correspondence. You see, see that, that desktop it that guy's got old. there? It seems old. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it looks like looks like yeah, it looks like the one I had like 15 years ago. So, or you know, it, it just, yeah, it just, it's it's like uh, it seems like it's been you know it's 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 been there it's for an a old long box. time. Yeah, so it makes you wonder what what all they could be looking for, what kind of weird records. But, but the, the interesting part for me is like how are these items still in this position? Like, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of weird, right? I'm trying to think like how much e waste I have. I must have some of that crap too like just socked away where a computer dies and you just don't you don't mm -hmm. want like you're so paranoid about someone stealing stuff from your your drive or whatever so um i mean i i knew somebody no joke i used to know a guy who would shoot his hard drives on the on the on the shooting range when what? they were done yeah yeah just to to keep them from uh i mean that <laughs> that makes sense like if that, that does make sense you know because it's, it's I, like, I would be paranoid a little bit as well if i had like some, yeah some really valuable you know information on them they could they could, they could get stolen so so yeah i mean this this is where we are now is i mean the interesting thing is that you know it it, it kind of confirms that they never they never thought it was anyone else um because, kind of, because he's like the main suspect, Paul Flores. Yeah. From what I've gathered, is like the only guy implicated because that's the only person that you can implicate. There's no, there's literally an, an, no other theories as far as uh, I, you know, as far as I've seen. And I, I think the only kind of questions I have in my head, it's almost like the same questions I would have with the Natalie Holloway thing. I, I, I get, it's so weird because I think for for people like you and I who, mm -hmm. who wouldn't ever do anything like this, we're not gonna. You know, kill it, kill kill someone, and most likely and not. Yes. Probably not. Yeah, probably I mean, not not, not not until, you know, 
<laughs> until next someone Friday. Us. Yeah, not until the next major argument I have with um, you know someone parked outside my house. No, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the question is, um, I just I just always wonder about the logistics of this. It's always like, so I guess it's kind mm-hmm. of presuming that that yeah. he you know probably assault. I guess the theory would be he allegedly would have assaulted her maybe sexually and then, you know, and then, and then got his face punched in the process and then hid the body. And it's like, it's, it's hard to drag someone who's six foot one woman or not. Exactly. That's, um, that's, that's, that's a very important detail in the case that I feel like I'm not sure, but like I, I would, uh, uh assume that a lot of people like not, uh, took this into consideration that Kristen was six foot one. Um, yeah. that, that's that's a pretty big body to pretty big corpse to hide or dispose of you know if you have like a it's a whole nother game when you're talking about like someone who's five foot one and six foot one you know it's a whole nother game yeah the weight yeah, is, so was, the weight is almost wondering. like twice as, as as big right yeah i mean in pulling any kind of person even a much smaller person it's pretty hard you know it's 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 hard to carry even something that's a hundred pounds. That's just dead weight, right? So, and you figure she probably weighed what at least one fifty. Um, at like six a, foot one. I feel like uh, yeah, one one thirty, one one forty. Yeah. Definitely. So it, that's that's yeah, a, that's, yeah. that's a lot of weight to to, to just drag and, and and hide and dispose of. Yeah. Pull into a car, pull around, like and and then not get spotted. So I don't. I'm I'm looking at, at, at the at the terrain uh, of of this uh, you know the general vicinity where where it allegedly happened because it did happen somewhere around the college area right so I'm I'm looking at it and I'm I'm, I'm finding a, a hard time to to find where would you dispose of it maybe in the mountains yeah yeah or or I, right I mean you I guess you could drive off into the hills or drive out drive out to the beach I just I always I always wonder like. I mean, it's much easier to make someone walk, right? Like that's why sometimes murderers make the person, you know, dig their own grave even because I don't you think know, like Paul the, Flores was that did that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, I, it doesn't it doesn't seem like she would have been compliant, um, especially with his, his black eye, exactly, right? Exactly. Like, like uh, I don't think yeah. that this just dig your own grave and you know, yeah, uh, and I will kill you and bury yeah. you in that grave. Seems seems a bit. Uh, a bit uh, far-fetched, you know. We we can always uh, think about like uh, maybe he had some uh, acquaintances in, in the vicinity that that helped him out, family members. Who knows? You know, I'm I'm not like alleging anything, but you know, it's all alleged. I, it even kind of makes you wonder, like, because I I don't know. I mean, in your experience, I I don't know that I've dealt with a lot of passed out drunk people. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've de- dealt with a lot of people that have been almost passed out or or unreasonable. But like I'm like, how do you how do you even get a passed out drunk person up, and then get them to walk with you? You know what I mean? Like like yeah, I feel like usually you're end up uh, carrying somebody. Yeah, it's a, it's. A, it's I've, I've, I've not been in those situations uh, like uh, recently or or just in general. <laughs> like I haven't been like maybe in like one, uh, once or twice in a situation like that. So um, it's always a, a bit of a challenge because uh, usually in those types of situations you're also a little bit drunk, you know. So um, it makes it yeah. even harder. Yeah, it seems weird. It seems I, it's. I feel like there's still some missing pieces here, but it is pretty fascinating. Like, you know, it is, it is, I guess two things, two things stand out with me as we kind of wrap this up and, you know, cause, cause we don't know what's going to happen. We just know that it feels like things are moving. So one is look at the power of the podcast. So, you know, kudos to this guy with his podcast that he, you know, he did some investigative work. Um, he got everybody excited. He got everybody thinking about something your own, that, yeah, your own backyard podcast. And you know, yeah. the, the guy's name is, um, the man who is running the podcast is Chris Lambert. And you know, I will definitely check his podcast out. He seems like a very yeah. interesting, uh, person, you know, and he actually, uh, yeah, he, he, his podcast holds a lot of weight. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, and it seems like maybe maybe the police are trying to redeem themselves now because I, I feel like you know like like to our point the kind of come on man thing like like come on you like you guys it seems like you guys had something that you could have just interrogated the shit out of this guy until he he gave up the goods you know with the earring 
Oh, yeah. And then that gets that, lost. Yeah. Then, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for all the all the searches of people's property. Oh, yeah, you know, that was one of the weird things. One of the articles I was reading about when the search was happening, that people were gathered outside of this guy's house, this Paul Flores' house, and they're yeah. like, dig her up, dig her up, dig her up. I was like, wow, that's... I don't know if that's dark or not. Is that is that like... Is that like wanting justice for her, or is that being like just, just a little bit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. What, what do you I think of that? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that's respectful. Like I, I, I personally yeah. would not condone that type of behavior. You know, that seems that's dis- disrespectful. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I would not condone that. As, it, uh, it, it makes you wonder, like, what was the tone? Like, was it that like they everybody knows he did it? You know that kind of thing, where like, like you know, allegedly he did it. So they all, they kind of have been watching him this whole time, or is it? Yeah, it just makes you wonder what the, the motivating factor is. So, um, anyway, exciting stuff, and and you know, I'm I'm kind of like like part of me, the part of me that, that likes justice. And I'm sure you're the same way you're us. Of course, it is it is at least nice to see that maybe someone's family will get some closure, some justice. As sad as it is that like, like they'll never get their daughter back, obviously, but. Um, she's, maybe she's, maybe, she has been yeah. declared dead, right? Uh, at this point. Yeah, I think so. I think she's, she's, there's, I mean, there's no way she would have, she would have had to be, be, be Houdini or something to take off like this and, and somehow frame up this guy. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely, um, unfortunate for the for the family involved it's always you know really sad to think about the, the family members who have to go through all of this uh, stuff even you know so many years after after it happened and yep. you know, yeah new, new. but but it's good i think it's it's good uh, the the fact that you know we we it seems to me that we're going to be getting some more information you know who knows maybe maybe an update on this uh, episode or on the situation is definitely going to be uh, happening maybe uh, not necessarily in a form of an episode maybe on our social media or something like that you know we will keep our you know followers uh, uh, posted up so you know this is a, a little bit of a shameless plug you know go to go, go on our social medias and follow us there uh, we will you know try to uh, keep everyone updated with the latest on, on on this case if 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 some more interesting details uh emerges essentially and yeah i guess this was the update you know we don't have anything concrete but the fact that you know uh, a lot of his old possessions uh paul's possessions are getting uh you know uh checked upon uh, by the sheriff's uh, office is it's definitely you know interesting the the, the only thing I, I wanted to mention uh, was this picture right here like we are looking at the trunk of the car so do you have like any explanation for this why is there so much like stuff in the back of the trunk of an old car like are they looking at stuff from 23 years ago or like what's going on in there like yeah it's kind of weird it makes you wonder if this family like are kind of like like pack rats you know they just keep i mean because even that car is like that's not really like like a, like a nice looking old car. Like people, but, people but the, for sure. Like, 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 you know like this car could probably you know fetch you some some dollars if just from me. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like uh, a bit of a you know uh, a, a a classic vehicle from, classic. From, from the states. Um. So yeah, this has been uh, episode twenty seven. I feel like we've covered pretty much uh, yeah. everything on this update. So. Right, guys. Um, anything, anything from you before we sign out, Glenn, or, or are we good? Uh, thanks for listening and hit hit subscribe. Yeah. So, guys, uh, this has been uh, episode twenty-seven. Uh, we have uh, updated uh, the current information on Kristen as uh, smart, uh, and sh- yep, uh, we are definitely interesting and interested and intrigued to find out more details that come about from this case as always you know subscribe um if you enjoy the content uh, leave a comment in the comment section if if you have some more interesting news i i, I always like uh, reading comments uh, from like uh, our audience members that like give us some sort of updated like uh, information or like some sort of information that we have not considered yet like there were a few comments like that in that uh, Diet Love Pass episode that really were interesting and I had to look into it and uh, yeah guys uh, leave a comment down below uh, uh, subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes we upload on a weekly basis this week we upload it twice and yeah uh, Keep 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 your family safe. Uh, you know what I'm saying. And catch us on the next episode. Peace out.